hello everyone so now we are going to do one more lab in this one we are going to learn how we can configure the routing protocol first we will do the dynamic routing protocol rip rip version 1 we are going to use generally this one we are not using in the production network rip version 1 if you see in the microwave design we are using the rip version 2 like if you want to connect two sides with the microwave connectivity we can see in the microwave indoor unit we are using the RIP version 2 but I am doing RIP version 1 lab because you will have the basic idea about the RIP then we will go for RIP version 2 most of the time in the production network we are not seeing the RIP version 1 and RIP version 2 also generally most of the time you will see EAJRP or OSPF is running inside the organization any enterprise network we are running the OSPF or EAGRP but if you are connecting your two sides with the fiber we will use the OSPF but in case like you want to connect two sides with the help of microwave they are using the indoor unit and outdoor unit to make the connectivity with the microwave so the supplier uh, they are configuring the RIP version 2 in the indoor unit okay in the indoor unit they are using RIP version 2 but anyhow no issue uh, we are not doing that so no need to worry the supplier will do that one subcontractor will do that one our main task is to configure the our internal uh, network connectivity they will give ISP will do that one so no need to worry for the microwave connectivity or fiber connectivity that is ISP headache not our headache okay but I saw in uh, our system, old system I saw that one, the supplier, the subcontractor, they are using the RIP version 2 in the microwave to connect the two sides in the indoor unit, they are using the RIP version 2, okay. Anyhow, let's see, imagine you have two sides, this is your head office, okay, this is the head office and one is a branch office. In the lab we are uh, doing uh, directly connectivity but in the real scenario what you will have you will have the MUX or DMUX okay it will connect to the MUX or DMUX this side ISP will terminate the connectivity MUX DMUX or you will have the switch in our master site ISP that is the internet service provider terminate the connectivity on the switch okay they terminate the connectivity on the switch and we connected from switch to our router okay so in the real scenario we will have like this in the real scenario if you see let me do some here if you see this way I can say here this is our enterprise network inside okay this one is also inside so what I will say he here let me write here this is uh, our network or enterprise network or any our network I will write here the bracket head office headquarter or head office and here this is our network network and here I can write branch office okay and if you see here ISP will terminate to this switch okay like this imagine like this this switch is installed in our organization we install this one ISP will they will have audio they will have the what we can say the panel they will terminate there from there they will bring the fiber cable and they will install in our switch from switch our responsibility uh, we will take our technician, our technician will take the cable and they will install, they will bring everything they will do, at last they will bring to our router and also technician will install our router in the rack, after that we will start doing the configuration. So this will be the scenario, imagine this is your okay head office, this is your branch office. In, let me give you example, we can say this is Riyadh, okay and this is Jidda. you want to connect these two sides ISP give you the link okay 
they terminate in the switch you have one switch you can give any configuration whatever configuration maybe you use the vlan also but anyhow for simplicity i will not use any vlan anything imagine isp terminate the cable here in in between here you will have the isp cloud here okay let me do one more thing here i will show you this way in between you will have the isp cloud okay we can say this is a isp cloud so what i can do here i can go here i can uh, okay I stop actually I downloaded one picture I don't uh, okay so see here I will go in the customize icon I will browse that image I will go to desktop I will select the cloud okay and let's see so imagine this is a ISP okay this is a ISP cloud they are calling the cloud they have also router switches everything so we can say this is a ISP cloud this one and they bring the cable they terminate on your switch interface and here also in jidda also they terminate in the jidda switch this is the what we can say this cloud in between this cloud you have lot of router switches lot of connectivity okay they have lot of connectivity if you want i will move this from here to here like this and this one from here to here like this okay so what we can say this is the isp cloud in between you will have lot of routers and switches so no need to worry about this one no need to worry about this from here to here this is the isp headache okay no need to worry for you they terminate on your switch okay after that that is your job from here from here that is your job what you will do so you can design here the core layer this is edge router and here you can take the lan network here distribution layer switch axis layer switch and you can connect the end devices okay anyhow for simplicity i will take the loop back here i will say this is my lan network okay i am taking here the loop back 0 i will treat this is my lan network 192.168.1.1 1.1 okay 1.1 is the 1.0 actually i will say that is our lan network so i am treating this as a my lan network here also or you can take the switch and connect no problem you can take the switch and connect but i will just create the loop back i will think that is my lan network or if you are facing difficulty to understand what is this lan network then take the switch take one switch here and make the connectivity okay do the connectivity from here to here and then here to here and put some server pc but in the real scenario you will have the core layer distribution layer but i taken directly one switch here but i taken directly one switch here you will have the distribution layer you will have hsrp so many thing you will have but anyhow now we are focusing on the what we can say uh, rip version 1 so later we will see the hsrp vrrp all that one so what i will do here let me connect from this here this here this here okay this one from here to here here to here so what we can do now we can do the configuration to the router let me do the configuration here okay so let me log into the router here in the router i will uh, write first to know and then enable config t host name r1 or head office i will give head office and then interface pass ethernet 0 by 0 ip schema whatever we are using we can use isp told us to use anything whatever we want so i will use here 192.168.1 12.1 this side and this side we will use 192.168.12.2 okay this way we will use here will be this will be here this will be here and now let's do the configuration i will write ip address 192.168.12.1 255.255.255.0 i will write here no shared okay 
I assign the IP address to this interface. Now I will do interface fast Ethernet. What is this? Uh, fast Ethernet 0 by 1. So I will write 0 by 1. Then I will write IP address 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.0. And then we will write no shirt here. So this way we assign the IP address to the head office. Okay, I will write do wr to save the configuration. Now I need to write the rip configuration. So we will write router rip and then network and give the network ID. So I will do 192.168.12.0. This is my one network ID and another network is 192.168.1.0. Okay, this one one network and let me remove the loopback because we are not using loopback now directly I am assigning the IP so this IP will be the gateway so this IP I assign to this interface this IP I assign to this interface here also I will remove the loopback I am, I am using this IP this side so I enable the RIP here okay I will save the configuration here and then I will go to this machine this router and I will configure here also if you see here this is the branch office so let's do the configuration here I will write here no and then after that we will write here enable config t host name r head office or branch office and then interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 i will write ip address 192.168.12.2255.255.255.0 then we will write no shirt okay then interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 I will write here IP address 192.168.2.1.255.255.255.0 and then we will write no shirt. Now we will do the RIP configuration. Router, router RIP, then network and network ID. What is the network ID? 192.168.12.0. Network ID of this one is 12.0. This will be 192.168. 2.0 okay so i will write 192.168 2.0 that's all i will save the configuration so after some time if you write show ip root you will get the root if you see this root we are learning from the rip if you want to check i can write show ip rip show ip root rip so if you want to go to 192.168.1.0 network then you can go you can forward the traffic to 192.168.2.1 this side then it will go here and ad value is 120 if you see and hope count is one because the metric of the rip is hope count we have only one router in between if you want to go here then this is only one router that's why hope count is one and ad value for rip is 120 so now if you assign any ip let me put some ip here 192.168.1.2 this is the label i put now let me assign the IP to this machine. I will go here and gateway we will give the router interface IP. Okay and let me assign here also some IP. I will give here this is a label I put. I will go to the machine to assign the IP address. I go here I will write 1.1 and let me do the same thing. I will assign the IP IP but here that is 2.2. This is a label let me assign here the IP. I will go to the desktop I will write here I will put the gateway as a router interface okay and here this will be 2.3 and then let me assign this IP to the desktop I will keep here and then 2.1 okay so now we have the IP address let me try to communicate with the head office or branch office I am here in the head office and this is the branch office I will write here ping 192.168.2.2 so i am pinging i am communicating from head office to the branch office we will see it will work or not request timeout okay then we will see request timeout now it is working perfectly so we are able to communicate head office branch office are communicating let me do one more thing i will install one server here okay we can say this is our web server and we will give the IP 192.168.1.4. Okay, this is a 1.4. I will go here. I will assign this IP here 1.4 and the gateway should be 1.1. 1 
and uh, DNS I can give same IP and we can configure DNS also I can go here in the DNS if you see and I can write here google.com and uh, this will be the IP of this one so same IP for the DNS also and the google.com also and if you want you can assign the DNS as uh, what IP one dot okay so now what we can do let me try to access this server first of all from head office then we will go for the branch office I will write here and also DNS server is on off we need to check that one also where is the DNS server DNS server is off we will on this one okay and now you can go here you can type google.com and it is uh, unre uh, not working maybe I don't have the DNS so let me write here 192.168.1.4 and now we will see I will go to the browser web browser and then I will check here I will write google.com and if you see it is working perfectly okay I am accessing uh, from head office only the server is also in head office I am also in head, head office let me check here from the branch office I can access or not let me go here and write google dot com okay I write here google dot com it is working perfectly okay so what they will do they will send the packet to get the DNS and then after that DNS will give you google dot com is at 1.4 then it will go there okay so it is working perfectly no issue with the name and also with the IP both are working the branch office example if I write IP here 192.168.1.4 it is working okay because uh, here this is a branch office guy is accessing the server which is located in the head office and also if you want to locate if you want to access the server with the domain name also you can use because we are using the DNS okay it is working perfectly why it is working perfectly because we are using the DNS okay because we are using the DNS here so I hope it is clear for you if you have any question any doubts let me know imagine this is a real scenario in our case we have like this but here instead of rip we are running the OSPF here here and here OSPF means in this interface we enable the OSPF this interface and also this interface this interface we enable the OSPF in our real scenario okay in real scenario we use the OSPF not RIP but I teach you RIP in our next class we are going to learn how we can configure the OSPF also so what we learn in this one we learn how we can access the head office server from the branch office like this way we are accessing this is a server which is located in the head office and we are accessing from the branch office it is working perfectly and also this guy can communicate with this guy also this is also working maybe imagine your manager told this guy should not access or maybe this guy should not access this server okay this guy should not access the server then you need to configure the ACL to block this one or if you have firewall you can create the policy also depend what device you are using if you are using firewall here you can configure the policy this source or you can use the IP or MAC address or the user also if you are using the Active Directory or the Cisco eyes you can uh, create the policy and you can have the user here in the Cisco eyes or Active Directory so in the policy example you are using FortiGate here then you will uh, create one policy saying that this user cannot access the, that server like that you can do that way also anyhow so this is a basic lab about the RIP okay rip version one thank you bye